It's a very simple uh, four steps um, conversation. We'll start with the opportunities. So where do you think growth would be generated uh, by trying to produce this um, construction specific developers community? Um, and how do you think transparency will improve uh, the image of our industry? The reason why we, we touch on the image of our industry is because we are responding to the government 2025 report. Um, and you know, in that document, it's very clearly specified that in order to retain the talent, in order to uh, bridge the skills gap that you know, we are facing in the next 25 years, we need to change our industry. And we just ran a, a, a quite an interesting event at the RIBA a couple of weeks ago on this. I mean, uh, I suppose from BRE's point of view, then the opportunities bit is one thing that BRE has probably thought probably not thought of before in terms of that we do a lot of measuring and a lot of um, uh, measuring of this sustainability data for, for instance or we do a lot of measuring and testing of products and construction products yep. but actually one of the things is possibly been that the process has been the important thing to get there to the certificate has been the important thing or to get there to the sustainability rating along that journey of getting there to the sustainability rating we're collecting a huge amount of data that then we've sort of got to a four star or a five star rating mm -hmm. at the end but we actually have something much much more valuable there and um, rather not just the four star or the five star or three star rating so we've got actually a huge body of data there but right now i think BRE's maybe waking up to the idea that that huge body of data can be reused it can be used for different things it could be used to um, make the process much leaner much smarter it could be used to improve the process it could be used just to show how Different, different parts of the process, I'm talking say for instance about brain, different parts of the process could be integrated with other open data sets or things like that. So that's one of the things BRE have begun to, begun to look at. Our goal, I guess if you were to say we have a goal, is to make um, parts of BRE's data open so that people can reuse them in other applications. But in terms of what people reuse it for, I think that's the, the really nice bit that we don't know. Mm. and we'll probably be really, really surprised at what somebody uses some of the data for. And that's really good because it's something that we might never have thought of before. So that's what I, is the exciting part of it for us. Yeah. Yeah. So I think there are two big ideas under threat that are necessarily under threat. And, and the first is the idea of proprietary data. Yeah, this is mine. Yeah. Uh, it's like this is my ball and you're not playing with it. it, it these things are directly analogous. And the second idea is authority, that authority has vested traditionally in the professional. Whereas today, knowledge, because of the increased amount of local user generated data, knowledge is being created at a local level and owned at a local level and individuals have access online to authoritative bodies, whether it's Wikipedia or whether it's an, an industry they can access by email. All of this is undermining the traditional authority of going to the library to get your data, going to your politician to understand the issues, going to the, uh, the doctor to get a diagnosis. And this is, a, a, this is the, t the nature of the time that we're in, that there's this whether it's a sea change, a phase change, a total reversal, or whether it's just a repositioning, I don't know. But there's something that's been happening for a while that will continue to happen, which, which is this change in the way that data is seen and the way that authority is then created. And I think as a professional, you have to start to understand that authority is as much at the, at the local level, as much at the low level, as you like, as it is at the high level and that you have to learn to understand the inputs from both. Yeah. I think there's, there's been nice hackathons that have happened, um, like for instance around all the flooding data that was um, from the flooding just uh, last year around in the south of England. And there's some nice hackathons that happened on that, just giving the data out there and saying, well, you try analysing it and come and think of something that we haven't thought of before. Um, and it's quite, I think that's quite a nice model to, to, yeah. to use. Especially because you might find somebody who actually comes up with something really of value and then from 
a bigger organisation like BRE's point of view, you could, you've got an immediate partner there who you know who is um, extremely well educated and can find something in your data. And from the partner's point of view, they've got a possibly a, an income stream or some yeah. possible value in partnering up with the, the bigger organisation. I would, I would like to see a lot more involvement of non-construction professions in construction. And I don't I mean by that just that the influence or, or the activity in construction from software or software houses or data scientists um, to be able to put in ideas in place. Because I think one of the nice things by 2025, I would say, is that while there's a, a clear roadmap, I think along the way, I think that roadmap will become hugely enhanced because there will be something that comes up which we haven't thought about or that it hasn't, we haven't even had an idea about. I think that's the really exciting part. Let's bring some people together uh, and ask them to come with their data, put them in a room together for half a day a day and see what they come up with. It's a process that is um, used in planning and design called inquiry by design. You bring lots of people together and uh, unusual people together, not the usual suspects, but you, you bring in representatives from as wide a community as possible. And by the, end of, by the end of the day, you've got something unheard of. But I think alongside the idea of openness and uh, data streaming, I would like to think of the idea of creation being a great opportunity, a great part of a future vision. It may not be specific to the needs of your project, but I think what's going alongside uh, perhaps ideas of open uh, data in the construction industry are the uses of data and computing as generators of ideas rather than as just slaves that, that, that sort of you, you drop all your data into. They're actually they're, the computing digital process is becoming an enabler, a creator of ideas, which is really fantastically interesting to, uh, I think not just architects, but anybody, in, any consultant involved in planning and design because you've now got this tool to throw up new possibilities. I think the opportunity to integrate is the massive opportunity that digital brings us. And I would sit alongside Open as a, a key driver of future development, future innovation throughout the whole of our industry. And, and the more that we can have other people's information on our desktop uh, when they can't perhaps be physically present, or the more that their algorithms can be embedded in our, our algorithms, uh, will create, I think, a richer product at the end of the day. And if those algorithms and the data that drive them are open, then it ought to be a, an accelerated process. Yeah. But I think the open is, is, is alongside the integrating yeah. aspect of the future. It goes back to the idea of um, if you've got a, a data set that you can share and you can reuse, if you've got a data set about traffic, the, the variables that affect traffic out with just the data you have on that traffic is, is immense and measurable. You've got data about um, schools and when they open, you've got data about possibly about um, the housing conditions round about and, and unemployment rates because that might affect what's happening with the traffic. You've got data on the, the population and their age and if those data sets are there and are available and you can bring them in, it helps to make that model much richer, it helps to make that model um, much more complete and it helps to find bits that you wouldn't have thought of before. Um, and It's a say, great challenge, yeah, it's so a you, great challenge. You may think that you might find something or some strand that actually you never dreamed would affect the traffic in the city and that's why it's um, that's why the congestion happens but you might find that because you can merge these data sets and also i mean going back to the idea of um, the construction sector the, the idea that you, you you use and build up all this big body of data as you're creating a building or as you're creating a structure and then it's sort of it's used just in that process of creating the building, or it's just used in that yeah. construction process. Actually, the the life of the building that that information is extremely extremely valuable, and I, I know that that's probably that has been looked at before, but it's been looked at to a great extent, especially with um, some of the government soft landing strategy. Understand the human inputs to the data that are being generated, and when you can, get your client to directly collect and even analyze their own data. And, and this isn't by any means just a sort of marketing exercise. 
it, it's a process of creative collaboration where ideas emerge because you as the consultant would have, wouldn't have spotted them on your own. The clients have and said, well, actually, what you've missed is that little cut through the hedge that the kids have knocked yeah. through, but now we all use because it's the fastest yeah. way to the bus stop. <laughs> One of the main things BRE does is to look at um, data and look at um, certifying data, showing how sustainable a building is because it uses evidence. And I think if that data isn't just doesn't just exist through our certification process, but if we can enhance that with, like as you said, maybe um, user generated data, you know, so our a bream sustainability rating isn't just data that we have or one of our assessors has got evidence for, yeah. but if we can enhance that in, in some way, maybe from data sets that are already out there, or maybe from user generated data, that's a good point. Then it's always it, it just helps in terms of the evidence and the body of evidence that we build up we're increasingly making our data sets open to the point of about to open a an online training platform that will allow people not only to have our open source software but to really know how to use it you know all the instruction manuals and case studies and we want to push them out there because we want to raise the the quality of the industry that we're in why be in an industry where you're the top player uh, but actually, the average is dragged down by the quality of the people around you. Much better to be uh, in an industry where the average is higher yeah. and you can still be the top player. Some of the data that we create uh, can't be open just because it's actually it's the, the property of the client. So we measure things that the client have, uh, has or we, or we look at the sustainability of their building, but we may take uh, readings and measurements which are actually... Um, confidential but if we can open up as much as possible then I, I think that's a very good thing and I think that's some that is something we're trying to do um, even down to being able to encourage um, in the future try and encourage the clients to say well it's your data but if you allow us and grant us access to open it here's the advantages for you and I, I mean we've got to show the evidence for that so that's why we may st we're starting out sm at a small scale, if you like, just to put out the data that we have already and try and put that out. But then we can show from using that data or for other, from other people using that data what the evidence for actually opening up the client-specific data is. So. But I think the other, th the other side of this is t in the next six to 12 months to be able to paint a picture of 2025 of how the UK and how the world are going to be in 2025. So the challenges and with them the opportunities of population growth, uh, whether it's here in the UK or elsewhere, are making profound, uh, have profound implications for the future of the construction industry. You know, we have to house people. We have to create places of employment for people. We have to solve the problem of congestion, which is crippling certain industries for much of the time. And those, we can't just let things carry on as they are. So that does suggest some fundamental shift in how places are put together and then managed once built. We can't just leave them behind. It has the most fantastic opportunities for living, health, culture, innovation, the spirit of a place, all the things that we cherish from history that we regret when we can't find them in the present could be part of, of a future, but only if we change the way that we're doing things at the moment. And that actually there's a massive, there's a massive goal there. And uh, if we can change the tools that we work with, change the processes that we use those tools in, take advantage of the digital, then there's a big prize.